So now that we've talked about global winds, let's talk about ocean currents, basically global movement of water. And the reason that we have our large-scale ocean currents has to do with our large-scale surface winds. So here in a minute, we're going to look at um, the, these, how water moves in these large ocean basins. But I want you to remember our discussion on um, the three cells, the Hadley cell, the Farrell cell, and the polar cell. And we said that actually between the Farrell and the Hadley cell, we have that descending air creates these semi-permanent high pressures. And then we said between the Farrell and the whole polar cell, we have uh, semi-permanent low pressures. And so semi-permanent just meaning that they kind of are generally kind of linger there at the Earth's surface. So we're going to look for these on the next map. And um, we're going to see what kind of consequences they have to the movement of the ocean ocean waters, ocean currents. The other thing to keep in mind is that as we talk in the northern hemisphere, um, that air is going to move what uh, clockwise around a high, and air is going to move counterclockwise around a low in the northern hemisphere. And if air moves that way, then ocean currents are also going to move that way. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw up here the southern hemisphere. And the, it's different. If we have a low pressure, uh, cyclonic movement then is going to be clockwise. And if we have a high pressure in the southern hemisphere, anticyclonic movement is going to be counterclockwise. So be looking for those coming up. Okay. So one of the things as we look at these semi-permanent um, high and low pressures, um, keep in mind that they are going to be seasonally. They're going to wander as the intertropical convergence zone wanders, the ITCZ wanders seasonally, north uh, around uh, July and south around January. Then these features also will wander. So here we go. Um, there's going to be five major ocean basins and we call you can kind of already see these different currents the blue currents are bringing cold water toward from the poles towards the equator in either hemisphere okay so those are blue they're cold and then the warm currents are bringing uh, are in red and they are bringing warm water from the equator towards the poles okay um, five ocean basins. And so each ocean basin, here's the first one, each ocean basin has a series of currents that actually go together to create what we call the ocean gyre. Um, so here we have the North Pacific gyre, and it's composed of a handful of currents that work together to make the one circulation. There, we, There's one, two, we have the South Pacific ocean, Ocean Gyre, the North Atlantic Gyre, the South Atlantic Gyre, and the Indian Ocean Gyre. Okay, so let's kind of um, well, let me go back for a minute. Um, I'm gonna, we're gonna building up to talking about El Ninos and La Ninas, and in order to kind of understand El Nino and La Nina, I want to focus on something called upwelling. And to understand El Nino and La Nina kind of systems, I don't know if you call them weather systems or conditions, El Nino and La Nina condition, we kind of focus on this part of the world. So this is North America, South America, kind of focus on the region right here. Uh, then I'm going to kind of go over here. This is Australia. This is Indonesia. This is where it's kind of nice if you haven't already kind of gotten a map for this course, it's kind of helpful. So the next slide talks about something called upwelling. And where we have these cold ocean currents, so they would be coming from the poles, like this Peruvian current, coming from the poles towards the equator. California is a current, is a cold current down um, on our west coast. Um, we have something called upwelling. And what upwelling is, is basically it takes 
this uh, surface water and it has a current kind of like that and along the surface of the water and it brings colder water up to the continent up along to the coast so what upwelling is it's it's from below we get a vertical movement of water nice cold nutrient rich water that comes up and it cools the coast and I kind of showed you the Peruvian current off of South America, the California current off of our um, North America West Coast, and there is a similar current in West Africa that, that, that brings that, that we count on, or people living there counts on this upwelling. It's an ongoing um, important phenomenon that happens along those coasts where we have that cold ocean uh, that cold water coming from the poles towards the equator. It creates this outgoing current that brings up colder, nutrient-rich water from below, from the deep. Okay, so, so we're counting on upwelling being in place.